Sorry about that. <laughs> Welcome. It's a rainy, gray, cloudy day, but it's good. The earth is green, lush. It's a reminder to us that God is the creator of heaven and earth. And above all, that Jesus loves us. God, our creator, has made this world and he loves us. We know that because of his son, Jesus. And so today we're here together to worship and celebrate our creator, God. Give thanks to him for the sacrifice that he's made for us, for the redemption of our sins through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I invite you to stand now for our call to worship. Let us worship God, our light and our salvation. We desire to live in God's house and to seek God's name, to seek God in his holy temple. Let us worship God in spirit and in truth. God greets us this morning with these words, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's continue our worship now with some songs of worship. Our first one is Be Unto Your Name. Let's remain standing if we're able to sing the songs listed in the bulletin.
Good morning. Um, before we go uh, into prayer, um, I want to give a, a report um, from our mission trip to New Mexico a couple weeks ago. Um, we, it was, uh, if you don't know too much about our, uh, our group, uh, it's called Kalamazoo to Rehoboth. It's a nonprofit that we started. And this is our 12th year of doing this. Uh, we go there to Rehoboth Christian School and we uh, help run a free uh, four-day basketball camp um, with the help of the local coach, the high school coach there. So um, it's a, uh, and we bring um, uh, kids from, a lot of them come from uh, Kalamazoo Christian. Um, and then this year we had uh, 15 kids go with us and we had four leaders. So we had a big group of 19. Um, we, um, our, our, you know, our kids, um, their day begins with, they lead um, the campers to uh, different stations where they learn basketball skills. And one of the stations is a message station. And so they are, um, every, for four, you know, for four days, they hear the message of Jesus uh, during that time. So that's the, the main emphasis of this camp along with basketball skills. Uh, and so this year we averaged by about 108 campers. Um, it's a big draw in New Mexico. Uh, a free basketball camp brings a lot of uh, kids out. So it was, it was a lot of fun. We had a, a good time this year. Um, it was very hot. This was the hottest it's been. Uh, you know, when you can't, you know, after camp take a, take a good nap, you know, when it's, you're just laying there sweating, you know, it's, you know, you know, there's no air conditioning in the dorms that we stay in. So, you know, once we get there, we find a fan and you turn it on and it runs the whole week. So, <laughs> um, and then uh, during our downtime after the camp, our camp goes from 8.30 to 12.30. Uh, we try to do different things with our group of kids to go on hikes around the area, um, see the local, the native culture. We see some Indian, native Indian dances, um, you know, get out and do some shopping downtown. Uh, and one of uh, the biggest, uh, one of my favorite hikes is a morning hike where we get up, oh, probably about 4.30 in the morning and we start hiking to the back of the where the, the school is, and there's these mountains, we, we climb up there, and by the time the sun's coming up, we're already up there and we watch the sunrise. So it's a pretty cool experience. So yes, we had a really very good year th this year, um, and we're just so thankful for um, all your prayers and fa financial reports so supporting us, uh, Lisa and Olivia and I. So we are so thankful for that. So if any other, any other questions about um, our group, um, feel you know, free to ask us. So at this time, let's go uh, to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you with thankful hearts. It is truly a blessing to come before you and give you praise for your faithfulness. What a joy it is to be part of your church here at Heritage. May we always remember the love that you have for us as we lift up the members here that need your prayers this week. Continue to be with Duke Pe Peakstock as he is back at Friendship Village. Give, uh, may he get the rest that he needs as he gets his strength back. Be with Dave Vandermeer as he goes in for uh, hernia surgery this Thursday. We pray this is, the success, is successful in relieving the pain issues that he's dealing with. And we want to lift up the Vandenberg family as they have the funeral service for Ken this week, Tuesday. May they feel your comforting hand upon them as they go through this difficult time. We lift everyone up here at, Com at Heritage who may need your, your heavenly guidance this week. May, you feel your may they feel your presence as they call out to you. We also want to lift up your church, not only here, but around the globe. May all that are able to hear your word preached be filled with your spirit. Let your name reach every corner of the world. We pray all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. And just a reminder um, 
that the funeral service for uh, Ken Vandenberg will be here uh, this Tuesday, uh, August 8th at 2 uh, p.m. And today's offering, uh, tithes and offerings, uh, the uh, tithes will be for general fund Christian education assistance. And our loose change offering will be for Park Village Pines. And the baskets will be at the doors at the end of this uh, service. Thank you very much. morning again. Kurt Sellis, the director of Reframe Ministries, the media ministry of the Christian Reformed Church. And it's great to be here this morning. I've been traveling a lot to Ontario, which is usually about a five or six hour drive each way. There's construction at the bridge, so sometimes it can take up to two hours to get back to the United States. So it feels great to be in Kalamazoo, Michigan this morning, not having to drive more than 45 minutes from Grand Rapids. It's great to be here. I recognize some of you. I think this is my third or fourth time being able to preach at your church, share a little bit about our ministry. Brother Raj and Chris, uh, his wife, are here this morning, so it's great to see them, and uh, just really nice to be here. Thank you for the invitation to come. I'd like to say a few words about our ministry. There's another slide there uh, after this one that I wanted uh, to show. Yeah, there it is. So our ministry, as I said, is the media ministry of the Christian Reformed Church. Maybe you know it more familiarly as Back to God Hour or Back to God Ministries International. We changed our name back in 2021. Did that not because we were ashamed of Back to God Hour or Back to God Ministries International. It was more that we wanted to be able to speak to different generations. Lots of people in the Christian Reformed Church know about Back to God Hour, but not so many people outside of the Christian Reformed Church. And the reality of our ministry is that we reach way beyond the Christian Reformed Church here in North America and using nine other major world languages. We have the opportunity to speak into almost every country in the world and contextualization. So local people producing messages for people who understand their culture and their cultural context and using a wide variety of different uh, channels of delivery systems, platforms. So we started out using radio back in 1939, and then we used print. We still use some print, we use television, but more and more we use smartphone technology. In fact, uh, I'm gonna do something a little unusual here this morning. If you have a phone with you, which I read somewhere recently, more than 80% of Americans have cell phones. I'm betting it's a little bit higher here. I invite you to take your phone out for just a minute. Do you do that in church? Maybe to read the scriptures, but uh, not to check your email or look at Facebook, right? So here's what I want you to do. I want you to open Google for a search, and then if you have an iPhone, I can't really tell you what to do because I'm not an iPhone person. In the top right-hand corner, there's a little camera. And what I want you to do is put your finger on that camera and then point it at the screen here, and which is, has its QR code, and then it'll say reframeministries.org, and then just tap that. And instead of having a table out in the back with a brochure full of information about Reframe Ministries, you can take this with you, and when you get home and you're having coffee with your family and friends, maybe browse a little bit more about Reframe Ministries. So this is not an exam, no test here. I'm not going to hold you accountable. If you don't, I'm inviting you to know a little bit more about our ministry. We use technology. This is, uh, I don't know if it's the latest, but it gives you an opportunity to take some information with you. And then just uh, in closing, I wanna say how grateful I am to be able to partner with your church share. Without your prayers, without your financial support, through ministry shares, through personal gifts, our ministry wouldn't be possible. But 
with your help, as I said, we're able to reach into almost every country of the world, sharing the love and hope in Jesus Christ, helping those who want to grow in Jesus, follow him through discipleship materials and content. And also, we're committed to commi connecting audiences, listeners, um, whoever uses our materials to join the church, to be a part of Christ's body. So thank you for your partnership with Reframe Ministries. Now, put your phone away. We're going to look at God's word together. Let's uh, pray before we open God's word. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. So, Psalm 23. I recite it from memory, which I could do, but I have a bit of performance anxiety, and I'm sure I'd stumble, so I think it would be better to read it. But I'd like to ask you, this beloved psalm, to read with me together. Let's read Psalm 23 together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Some time ago, I saw a short news story in the paper about a sheep named Barak. This sheep had somehow slipped away from his flock and had gotten lost in the outback somewhere in Australia. By the way, Barak is spelled B-A-A-R-A-C-K, and I think it's pronounced something like this, Barak, Barak, something like that. So apparently after getting lost, Barak had lived in the outback for three years and had subsisted on, what, short pieces of grass wherever he could find them. Finally he was found and he was severely underweight and he could barely see because the wool was covering his eyes. And when they sheared his fleece, uh, from the 80 pounds plus of wool that they sheared from Barak, it was estimated that they could make 63.1 sweaters and 400 men's business socks. By the way, at the end of the article, the, the, uh, it's mentioned that uh, Barak returned to his flock and adjusted well and is uh, doing just fine. So I mentioned the story of Barak this morning because Psalm 23 is about sheep. It's one of the most beloved psalms in the entire Psalter. Unlike Psalm 119 with its 176 verses, many, many believers across time and space have memorized the six short, rich, beautiful verses of Psalm 23. Although the circumstances of Psalm 23 are unclear, we don't know exactly, you know, the details surrounding this psalm, it's very clear, it's abundantly clear that this is a psalm for all seasons of life. So this morning, let's look at Psalm 23 together. And unlike some of the other psalms, this psalm lays out very neatly in two parts. So in verses 1 through 4, we have the first section, and we could call this first section, The Lord is my shepherd. 
Psalm 23, verses 1 through 4. So there are a lot of images that are used in the Bible to describe God's relation to his people Israel. Some of these images include father, mother, fortress, shelter, rock, and shepherd. In fact, shepherd is the most commonly word used in the Old Testament to describe God's relationship with his people Israel. Think about wandering in the wilderness. Although our minds quickly go to the discipline part of being in the wilderness, when the people of Israel looked back on that time, they saw God's constant care for them, watching over them like a shepherd, watching over his flock. God provided them with food. He provided them with manna. He provided them with meat. He provided them with water. He protected them from Pharaoh's armies and other hostile nations. Once again, God's protection in the wilderness was like that of a shepherd caring for his flock. David, himself a shepherd, does something unique in Psalm 23 with the idea of shepherd. When we think of sheep, we usually think of flock. But David doesn't do that here. David thinks of shepherd and my shepherd. This is a deeply personal psalm, a deeply personal confession of God's provision and his protection. David goes on to say, he makes me lie down in green pastures. So it's important for us to look at this and say to ourselves, this isn't some harsh brown desert place, perhaps a bit like some aspects or places in New Mexico with sagebrush blowing across the landscape. No, we can picture in our mind's eye a lush meadow with thick green grass and dotted with wild flowers, yellow, red, white flowers. This is a beautiful place. Nor is it a dry place. We see in the psalm that there's a bubbling stream off to the side. In short, this is a resting place that pictures shalom, the biblical idea of peace. Tranquility, wholeness, completeness, flourishing, and prosperity. Under the care of God as his shepherd, King David lacks nothing. But we should add, it's not a place where nothing ever happens. This is not a static place. God, the great shepherd, leads David and his people in the paths of righteousness. Now, I know when we see this word righteousness in the Bible, we think, oh, moral precepts or statutes. And that's not wrong, but Sadiq, the Hebrew word here in Psalm 23, means God's provision and his protection as well as moral precepts. The important point in Psalm 23 is about God's provision and protection. They bless David and God's people and in doing so, they are a witness. They are a testimony to the surrounding nations of God as shepherd of his people. David moves on in the psalm in these verses 1 through 4. He's not merely resting in a shelter's place, sheltered place. He's not hiding from the storms of life. David is on a path. And in verse 4, we see that this path sometimes goes through dark places. Places where danger lurks, where even death is a real threat. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, David says, I will fear no evil. And here in verse 4, at the very center of Psalm 23, is the core truth and confession of truth and comfort for this psalm. What does David say? At the very center of Psalm 23, he says, For you are with me. This is the bedrock confession and assurance for King David and for the people of Israel. In times of rest and shalom, in the everyday paths of life, even in the lurking dangers of life, faced with death, David says, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Some years ago, I had the opportunity to 
visit Jordan with a group of seminary students, and uh, we did some um, work in uh, Amman, the capital of Jordan, and then we had a couple days to go down to the south part of Jordan to a place called Wadi Rum. It's a desert place, and when we arrived, it was scorching hot. We sat under the shade. In the shade, it was 116 degrees. It was scorching hot. But later in the day, when the sun went down, things started to cool off. I'm not sure what the temperature was that night, but we went outside and uh, we um, uh, had a chance to um, experience the desert and uh, see the stars, the glory of God. But I also remember on that trip seeing a shepherd next to the side of the road. And uh, I took note, because we don't see so many shepherds here in Michigan, and uh, uh, I noticed that this shepherd was seated on a folding chair, and he had his legs crossed, and between his hands he had a newspaper, all the while he was watching his sheep. Is that the scene that David is describing here in verse 4? No, he says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The shepherd is paying attention. In ancient Israel... A rod and a staff were the shepherd's main gear. The rod was a bat or a cub or a cudge, cudgel, and the, and the shepherd would use them to protect the sheep from predators like coyotes or wolves or bears or wild cats. And shepherds used a staff, a stick with a crook, to guide the sheep as they gazed in the field. I will fear no evil, David says, for you are with me, protecting and guiding me. Verse 4 also provides the hinge or the turning point on which David shifts in Psalm 23, verses 1 through 4, the Lord being his shepherd, to verses 5 and 6, the second section of Psalm 23, where David refers to the Lord as you, not E-W-E, -E, but Y-O-U, David refers to the Lord as you, and he says, the Lord is my host. A shift from the Lord is my shepherd to verses 5 and 6, the Lord is my host. Some years ago when we lived in China, I worked for an educational organization, and as part of my job, I would visit different schools, and when I would arrive, the the, the leaders of the school would put on a big banquet every time I went. Sometimes I'd eat seven at seven banquets in five days. It was just a lot of, lot of eating. And they would just lay out the food. It wasn't Kung Pao chicken. It wasn't sweet and sour pork. It was the really fancy Chinese food. And I have to say, um, while I enjoyed the food to an extent... It was very awkward to be the guest of honor, and I ate way too much in those banquets. But that's the scene here in Psalm 23, verses 5 and 6. David is at a banquet, and he is the guest of honor. God himself is hosting David. He lays out a banquet. And David is the guest of honor. And just like at a Chinese banquet, no doubt David is sitting in the honored place at this banquet. And it tells us here that uh, this is an extravagant gesture. Uh, oil is poured over David's head. I think today some of this uh, imagery is lost on us. When I think about oil in my hair and the trouble I'd have getting it washed out, I miss the point. But the point is this, an extravagant gesture of God's hospitality, his welcoming to King David, to the one whom he loves. And just like at a Chinese banquet, the host continues to pour wine into David's cup. It's never empty. Once again, an extravagant gesture of welcoming, of hospitality. And David's enemies are at this banquet also. And if you read 1 Samuel, 1 and 2 Samuel, you know that David had lots of enemies. And this is a victory banquet, but it's not about victory over David's enemies. It's a ratification banquet. It's a banquet celebrating God's promises to King David. 
his promises of watching over him, protecting him, and protecting God's people. In the ancient world, the great king would host a banquet for the lesser kings, the vassals who were under him. That's the scene that's taking place in Psalm 23, verses 5 and 6. This is a covenant scene, a scene of God's promises to King David and to the people of Israel. And we know that this is a covenant scene because of David's use of the word, the name for God, Lord, in verses 1 and 6. David says in verse 1, The Lord is my shepherd. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever, he says in verse 6. I'm sure you know this, but in Hebrew, the people of Israel, out of fear of taking God's name in vain, they didn't say God's name. They said Lord. They said Adonai in Hebrew. And behind that, that word Lord, that address, is God's personal name that he gives to his people. Remember Exodus chapter 3, God meets Moses at the burning bush, I am who I am, Yahweh, sometimes we say Jehovah. This is not the name for all of the nations. This is the name that God gives to those whom he makes promises, to those with whom he makes covenants. This is a covenant ratification ceremony, banquet, that's taking place in verses uh, 5 and 6 of Psalm 23. But there's more covenant language here as well. David says in verse 6, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. The words goodness and mercy, they hide a little bit the covenant language of this phrase. In Hebrew, the word that's used in Psalm 23 is chesed. You've got to have that little chesed. This is a small word, but it packs a punch. It's used over 250 times in the Old Testament. It's the most important word in the Old Testament. And what does chesed, this little word, mean? It means God's, Yahweh's steadfast love, his enduring love, his never-ending, never-ceasing faithfulness to his people. This word chesed, with its deep, profound significance for God's people, uh, uh, assures them here in this psalm and throughout the Old Testament that God will never leave or forsake them. And David, as a confession at the end of this banquet, says, I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Why? Because God follows after me. He pursues me. And David will rest in God's presence forever. God will never leave or forsake his people. The Lord is David's shepherd. The Lord is David's host. And David can be assured that he will dwell in the house of the Lord forever because he can trust in the providence and the provision of Yahweh who has promised his steadfast love forever. This short, simple psalm, extremely rich and lovely, can stand on its own. Its words of assurance and comfort give us great hope and peace for all that we encounter. But there's one other thing that we should mention before we close Psalm 23 this morning. I don't know if you noticed, I had a little uh, visual aid here on the pulpit. This is actually a Chinese scroll that uh, Vicki and I put up in our house at Christmas time. Uh, anyone here read Chinese? Let me just say, um, it says, Yi Ma Ne Li, Yi Ma Ne Li. Doesn't mean Kong Pao chicken, doesn't mean sweet and sour pork. Yi Ma Ne Li, it's Chinese for a name. That is, it's not really a Chinese word, it's a transliteration reflecting a Hebrew word. Let me say it one more time, Yi Ma Ne Li. Does that ring any bells? It's actually a name found in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Emmanuel. Emaneli. Emmanuel. And what does that Hebrew word mean? God with us. We can't leave Psalm 23 this morning without mentioning Emaneli. Emmanuel. God with us. Because that's at the very heart 
of Psalm 23. When David says at the center of Psalm 23, for you are with me, he's thinking specifically of Yahweh, the promise-keeping God. But as Christians today, we know that David is also pointing ahead to Imaneli, Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus says in John 10, verse 11, I am the good shepherd. And in the same passage, Jesus goes on to say about himself, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. What does it mean to say the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep? It means that while he's watching over them and they're scattered on the hillside, he's not seated on a folding chair reading a newspaper. He's paying attention to the sheep, guiding and protecting them. And, as Jesus mentions in another passage in John, if one sheep goes missing, like, say, Barak, those sheep I mentioned at the beginning of my sermon, Jesus doesn't just say, oh, well, it's just one of a hundred. No. He goes to find that lost lamb. He spares nothing, not even his life, to find that lamb. In the same way, he has come looking for us. He spared nothing to recover and redeem us. As I said, not even his own life. When Jesus says to us, for I am with you, we can take it as the gospel truth. Emmanuel, God with us, is the message at the very heart of Psalm 23. For you are with me. This is a word of comfort and a confession of trust for a time of much turmoil. Remember some years ago when I was the pastor of a small Presbyterian church in Birmingham, Alabama, down there in the south, when I would visit people in the hospital or in their homes or whenever they had some situation that was troubling and uh, they needed comfort, almost every time we read together Psalm 23. For I am with you. This is also the message of Jerry An, the Chinese language ministry that your church supports as he does media ministry in China and with Chinese speaking people. He doesn't say Emmanuel, he says Imaneli, which means the same thing God with us. That's at the heart of of his ministry in China, and you're helping that ministry. Once again, thank you very much. This Psalm 23 is a precious psalm for all times and places. It tells us who God is. He is our shepherd, and we know that through Jesus Christ. And then gives us the promise, the assurance, that he will never leave or forsake us. In closing this morning, let me just leave you with this question. If God says to you, for I am with you, if he has given you his promise, as he's done in Jesus Christ, how will you live your life this week? Amen. Sorry about that. Let's sing together, standing if we can, um, He Leadeth Me. In the gray hymnals, number 452, stanzas 1, 2, and 3.
our privilege and joy to gather around this feast this morning, celebrating God's love for us and his promise of being with us forever. Congregation of Jesus Christ, the Lord has prepared his table for all who love him and trust in him alone for their salvation. All who are truly sorry for their sins, who sincerely believe in the Lord Jesus as their Savior, and do desire to live in obedience to him as Lord. All of those are now invited to come with gladness to the table of the Lord. Let's pray. With joy we praise you, gracious Father, for you have created heaven and earth, made us in your image, and kept covenant with us, even when we fell into sin. We give you thanks for Jesus Christ our Lord, who came as the light of the world to show us your way of truth in parables and miracles. Therefore, we join our voices with all the saints and angels in the whole creation to proclaim the glory of your name. Amen. Lord our God, we pray that you send us your Holy Spirit so that this bread and cup may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. May we and all your saints be united with Christ and remain faithful in hope and love, gathered with your whole church, O Lord, in the glory of your kingdom. On the night that he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread. On the night that he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, saying, This is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Whenever you do this, whenever you eat this bread and drink this wine, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again.
the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Thanks be to God. the blood of Christ, the cup of our salvation. Thanks be to God. Our prayer of thanksgiving comes from Psalm 103, the verses 1 through 5. Praise the Lord, my soul. All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Amen. I invite you to stand now for the benediction. Receive these parting words from God himself. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen.